Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a with and against the grain sample essay video over the Delaney Lecluse sample. And I'm just going to be looking at body paragraphs in the with the grain. And I thought we would just go through and look at her Schaefer formatting in a couple of paragraphs to give you some ideas. So here it says, Michaels precisely argues that the impoverished in America strive to overcome their economic problems and improve their financial situation. Um, this is a topic sentence. The word precisely is the word that makes it into her words. Precisely is a little bit shaky here, um, but I think that it's uh, good enough. And so you can see what she's trying to prove, that um, the impoverished in America do want to get better, um, but that they um, struggle in some ways. And then it says, for instance, the article, College is the Goal, the Problem Getting There by Anna Mona Hartikulis, provides testimonies of local Topeka students who want to apply to college but were unsuccessful because of their financial situ situations. That's her concrete detail from another article uh, that supports her point. I'll put the concrete details in green here. These anecdotes display that although low-income students have the drive and motivation to succeed, they are missing the funds to achieve their goals. Many at Topeka High students lack the funding to attend college, leaving them with lower-paying jobs and starting where they began. And so this is her commentary, kind of explains why um, they're having struggles there. Um, you might notice the possessive apostrophe here, uh, Topeka High's students. Um, if you're adding that S, you're saying it's possessive because there's not more than one Topeka High. Then we have a transitional statement. Furthermore, we go into a second concrete detail. Furthermore, a Nicholas Kristoff's article is a hard life inherited, a close friend of Kristoff's who is immensely bright and could have been a lawyer, artist, or university professor, was born into a destitute life. His friend struggles to face the challenges poverty throws at him and never overcomes his disadvantaged life. His friend, Rick, did not have the opportunities many upper-class Americans have to succeed, such as quality edu education, a secure job, or stable family. The odds are stacked against people in situations similar to Rick, because even if they try to become prosperous and successful, poverty confines them to their current situation. So let's go over this part. This sentence is definitely concrete detail. Um, it cites the article. It has a quote. And so it's pretty easy to identify. So we'll put that in our green for concrete detail. And then his friend struggles to face the challenges of poverty, throws at him, and never overcomes his disadvantaged life. This is actually also concrete detail because it's a summary of what goes on in Christoph's article. Then you'll notice that she follows up with three sentences of commentary, or I'm sorry, actually two full sentences of commentary. And you can see that even though there's a little bit more green than normal, this balances out. And so if you need another sentence or two in order to get through your concrete detail or through your commentary or through your topic sentences, that's fine, as long as the minimum amount is there. And so you could see highlighted how we've got a great balance between her words and the words that she's chosen to use as support. Then this final sentence is her concluding sentence. We'll put that in pink. And it says, Michaels is correct in his argument that America's underprivileged want to overcome poverty and could have, ha could have a bright future but lack the tools and resources to do so. And she has a little typo there. But that concluding sentence wraps it back up to Michaels. And so one of the things that you want to do in these body paragraphs is make sure that uh, you clarify how you're defending uh, the author in question and who the author is that you're defending. Like if your entire point of your paper is to defend that author with outside resources, that author should probably appear in most of your topic sentences and most of your concluding sentences. Let's look at one more here real quick. So she has a pretty good second level transition here. Along with his argument of the less fortunate wanting to expand on their futures, Michaels is correct in his argument that there is an increasing gap in economic inequality in America. That is a pretty solid topic sentence. Uh, gives us a, a sense of the other part of the argument. And you'll notice that Delaney is not tackling his entire argument in every paragraph. What she's doing is defending the different subclaims that he uses to develop his overall argument. So now we're going to just talk about the wealth gap, uh, something that he talks about uh, in, his, in his article. And then you could see uh, one of the sources that uh, is pretty good for this, for a horror source. It says, for example, during the 1970s, corporate chiefs earned about 40 times more than their lowest paid worker. Now they earn more than 400 times as much. And then there's a couple of things I want to note about this particular concrete detail because it really does 
stand out a little bit. One of the things that she does that many students don't often do, she doesn't introduce the author and the title. A lot of times we get into this rut where we, where we go, according to Christoph and blah, 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 article, and we do that same thing for every single uh, citation. But you don't need to do that. Uh, Delaney has here the fact, and then she cites her source, Furahar, and the page number because it was from a book originally. And that's enough. You don't have to, if you're not going to borrow on the ethos, the credibility of the author that you're citing, there usually isn't a reason to actually name drop the author. Um, it may be true that you need to if the author is talking about a personal story or the author, like in Christoph and Rick Goff, the, that there's a relationship between the author and the subject of their article. Um, but a lot of times, a fact is a fact, and if it's taken from an academic source and that academic source is clear in the Works Cited page, you don't need to uh, name drop the author and the title of the article in the sentence. You can, but it becomes tedious if that's the only way you do it. All right, let's continue. Simply stated, the rich are getting richer and the poor are staying poor. The economic gap is providing wealthy people stable lives while the lower class is struggling with the daily tasks created by impoverished life. This is some great commentary that kind of ties for her to what, um, what her original author is saying having trouble with the highlighter here, one second. And you could see that it's pretty balanced here so far. Now let's go to uh, her transitional word into another fact. And this fact is from an older sheet that we don't use anymore, but you could definitely use the Jeff Bezos stats instead for something like this. It says, additionally, PBS's Statistics on Social Class in America states that Bill Gates's hourly wage in 1986 was $650,000 and a former welfare recipient's hourly wage was $6.61 in 2000. The 14-year time difference emphasizes the size of the gap by displaying how a very affluent man has, managed, has continued to gain wealth while average Americans are earning 64 cents more with the current minimum wage in 18 years. The gap is continuing to expand and is creating more problems for those dealing with poverty, such as unaffordable real estate and college tuition plans, plans that put them in debt for life, expanding the gap even further. So here we have, uh, again, a very typical Schaefer paragraph. We have the word additionally as our uh, nice, uh, simple transition here into a concrete detail. And then we go ahead and we have two solid sentences of commentary. This is a paint by numbers, uh, awesome uh, Schaefer paragraph. And you'll notice that she doesn't have to bring in a concrete detail from Michaels if she doesn't want to. Uh, here she just kind of launches into a uh, defense of him because she already kind of stated what he said in his top in her topic sentence. Then this final line, uh, concluding sentence, pulls it together. Economic inequality is prevalent in American society and causes numerous problems for those in poverty, as Michaels logically argues in his article. And again, um, even though there's a comma missing in the sentence, Delaney does a great job of tying back to the larger point and mentioning Michaels as well to show that she's still defending him. And so if you zoom out, you could see just the balance of the colors here. And you like it's just and blue is the most important part, and you could see that there's quite a bit of blue. Uh, yellow and pink are also great, and that the green, the concrete details, while important, never overwhelm her words. I hope this video helps you do your with the grain. We'll go ahead and do an against the grain video when the time comes, uh, as well as some other videos. So look, be on the lookout for those. Thank you.